Here is a very interesting concept in probability called this Shebyshev's inequality. But before we go there, let's understand the problem that we're trying to solve, right? So we have seen that if you have a Gaussian distribution, if you know that your data or your random variable x is Gaussian distributed, we have already seen the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, right? What does this rule say? For example, for example, let's just say x is the heights of x random variable represents the heights of students, right? In a college, right? Then we know that if I know that if I know if I know that the heights are Gaussian distributed, if I know that x is Gaussian or normal distributed, and if I know the mu and standard deviation, and this is important. I have to know three things. The first thing is that x is a Gaussian distribution. The second is the mean value. And third is the standard deviation value. Imagine if I know all of this, then I can say, I can say that probability of x lying between mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma is 95%, which means which means, right, let's, let's, say, let's take our heights, right, let's say our height, mean height is, let's say, 150 centimeters, let's say our standard deviation is, let's say, 10 centimeters, let's just say, then I know from this statement, right, again, this is, this is nothing but your 95 part of it, because I know that it is Gaussian distributed, and because I know the mu and standard deviation, I can say that 95% of students, that 95% of students heights, the students heights lie in the interval, lie in the interval of mu minus 2 sigma. So 150 minus 2 into 10, which is 130 and 150 plus 2 into 10, which is 170. So just because I know that it is Gaussian distribution, Gaussian distribution has this policy that 68% of the data lies between one standard deviation and minus one standard deviation. This is in the one standard deviation range. This is in the two standard deviation range. This is in the three standard deviation range, right? Around the mean, around the mean, 99.7% of points lie within three standard deviations, right? So if this is my distribution, right? If this is my mean, right? Let's assume this is three mu plus three standard deviation, and this is mu minus three standard deviation. So I know from this simple rule that we have seen earlier that that 99%, 99.7% of my data lies within three standard deviations, 95 within two standard deviations, 68 within one standard deviation around the mean. Now comes the big question. This is a very important property of the Gaussian distribution. What if, here is a big question, right? Here is the big question. What if, what if I don't know the distribution? What if I don't know the distribution? I don't know the distribution. I don't know that it is Gaussian. But let's assume, let's assume that I know, let's assume that I know the mean and the standard deviation. And I know for sure that mean and standard deviation, that the mean is finite, right? And the standard deviation is non-zero and finite, right? If you recall, finite mean, finite variance, we have discussed in central limit theorem, right? So what if I don't know the distribution? I don't know whether it's Gaussian, log normal, gamma. I don't know what it is. But I know the mean and the standard deviation. And I know that the mean is finite and the standard deviation is non-zero and finite. Now can I say something? Can I say that x percent of data, that x percent of data lies within, lies within, right? Uh, mu minus 2 sigma and mu plus 2 sigma or can I say some y percent of data some y percent of data lies within mu minus 1.5 sigma and mu plus 1.5 sigma or mu minus 1 sigma and mu plus 1 sigma can I find what these x and y percentages here are here remember in the case of Gaussian distribution we know the distribution already and we know the mean and height. We know these three things, right? And hence, we are able to simply apply the 68, 95, 99.7 rule. But what if 
I don't know the distribution, but I know the only thing I know is basically the mean of the distribution and the standard deviation. And I know that the mean and standard mean is finite and standard deviation is non-zero and finite. Can I find what percentage of points lie within the within two standard deviations around the mean or one standard deviation around the mean or 1.5 standard deviations around the mean? Now you might wonder why? What is the use of all of this? Let me give you an example. Uh, so so that so that you can connect with connect with how this is useful in the real world for data analysis, right? So imagine you have salaries of people, right? You have salaries of individuals in a country. Okay, you don't know the distribution. This is important. You don't know. Let's assume you don't know the distribution of the salaries of each individual. This is a country, right? Millions of millions of people with salaries and you don't know the distribution. Let's just say, but you do know, let's assume you do know the mean and the standard deviation. So you know the mean and standard deviation of the salaries. Okay, let's say X is a random variable that represents, X is a random variable that represents salaries of individuals in a country. I know, I don't know the distribution. This is very important. But let's assume I know my mean and standard deviation. Okay, I can compute the mean using central limit theorem and all these things, right? So, or using some uh, some other methods that, that we have discussed, right? Like bootstrapping and things like that. Now, if I know the mean and standard deviation, can I say, now can I say that some, okay, can I say things like this? Can I say what percentage? So, here my question is this. Given only this information, okay, given that I don't know the distribution, but I know only the mean and standard deviation, can I say, okay, let's assume I know that the mean is, some forty thousand dollars, forty k dollars, okay, and the standard deviation is let's say ten k dollars. Let's assume I already know that. The question I'm asking here is, what percentage, what percentage of individuals, of individuals, have a salary, have a salary, in the range of in the range of let's say this is 40 right 40 minus 2 sigma right which is 40 into 40 minus 20 so how many people have a salary within the range of 40 20k and 60k dollars very valid question right lot of economists would want to answer this question as part of data analysis right very simple similarly another question is what percentage of individuals have salaries in the range of let's say um, so this is this 20k here is 40 minus 2 into 10k right this 60 is 40 plus 2 into 10k right so this is basically 2 sigma this is in the 2 sigma range around the mean right if I want to understand how many people have a salary within the 3 sigma range which is 40 minus 3 into 10 which is 10k 40 plus 3 into 10 right so here the question here mathematically speaking is what percentage of individuals have a salary within the two sigma radius or two sigma range around the mean or within this exact values this is very very important question right if you're a social so, sociologist or an economist understanding salaries and distributions of salaries is very important but here i don't know the distribution but i want to answer this question how do i answer this very valid this is a very valid problem in data analysis right where all I have is basically my mean and standard deviation I don't know anything else about the distribution can I now answer questions like this this question one and question two right here if this was Gaussian distributed life would have been very simple if my salaries were Gaussian distributed I can say that 95 percent of incomes lie within the two standard deviations and 99.7 percent lie between the three standard deviations but here I don't know the distribution now what do I do here comes your Sebyshev's inequality. Very interesting idea, right? We will not be proving Sebyshev's inequality here. Uh, you, you can find it in most textbooks of probability and in most university courses. But from an applied standpoint, what is important is this. First, let me write what is Sebyshev's inequality and we'll see how it is useful. Let me state it first. The problem it's solving is this, right? Now, let's write the, let, let's write the formulation itself. What, 
So if x is a random variable with finite mean, with finite mean, which is mu, right, and a non-zero and a non-zero and finite variance and finite standard deviation, let's say, which is sigma. And I don't know the distribution. So I don't know. I don't know the distribution of x. I don't know the distribution, but I know the mean and the standard deviation. And I know the standard deviation and mean are finite and the standard deviation is non-zero. Then the probability that x minus mu, the absolute value of x minus mu lies between k sigma is less than or equal to 1 by k square. I'll, I'll break this up for you. I'll break it up and explain. But this is the statement. Okay, given a random variable x with finite mean and non-zero and finite standard deviation, this is what our Sebyshev's inequality states. Now let's understand this. What does this mean? First, this part is, so let's go step by step. This basically means that we are k standard deviations away. And here I just have k as a constant. If I want two standard deviations away, I'll just put two here. And this is one by two square. So this part and this part are clear. But what about this part? What does this mean? Okay, what does this whole thing mean? Can we write it more simply? What this means here is, so let's say Gaussian distribution and try to understand it. Uh, this distribution need not be Gaussian, by the way. This will work for any distribution with a finite mean and a finite and non-zero standard deviation. So what does it mean when you say x minus mu, this, the absolute value of x minus mu is greater than or equal to k sigma? This implies, what does this imply? This implies, Okay, let me write it here in a different color. This implies that x minus mu is greater than or equal to k sigma and, and x minus mu is less than or equal to k sigma. So if this is your mu, let's assume this is your mu, this is your k sigma, a mu plus k sigma, right? And let's say this is mu minus k sigma. Okay. So what this means literally, okay, let me write this better here actually. There is an easier way to write this. What this literally means is, this means, so if you look at the area, right, what this, what this whole thing means is, the probability of finding a value which is greater than, which is greater than mu plus k sigma. So here x is greater than or equal to mu plus k sigma, which means this region, right, or, or, your x is less than or equal to mu minus k sigma, this region. So what this is literally saying is the probability of x being greater than or equal to mu plus k sigma, right? Or your x being less than or equal to mu minus k sigma, this whole region, this whole region, this whole region this probability is less than or equal to 1 by k square. That's what it's saying, right? Or in other words, you can rewrite this. If the probability in this region and this region is, see, the, is greater than or equal to 1 by k square, then the probability in this region, right? The, if the probability in this region and this region is less than 1 by k square, not greater than, then the probability in this middle region will be greater than will be greater than 1 by k square. So in other words, we can write Sebyshev's inequality as this is my favorite way of doing it. Right? You can write it as the probability that x is less than k minus, sorry, x is greater than k minus mu minus k sigma and less than mu plus k sigma, right, is greater than 1 minus 1 by k square. Okay, again, most textbooks, most Wikipedia articles write this form. This is a little confusing actually to me. Okay, my preferred formulation is this. Because what is it literally saying? Let's read this in English, right? It is saying, given a random variable x, for which we know the mu and standard deviation, we know the mu and standard deviation are finite, and the standard deviation is non-zero, the probability that x lies between k standard deviations away from the mean, right? This is basically the k standard deviation range. This is the k sigma range around mean, 
this probability is greater than is strictly greater than 1 minus 1 by k square right so we have, we have just taken the standard formula of Sebyshev's inequality but this is also Sebyshev's inequality but you don't see this very often but let's see why this is useful let's go back to our question right let's go back to our question here so here let's assume x is a random variable right so let's go to our salaries example right so let's go to our salaries right we said the mu is 40k right sigma is 10k and my question here was my first question was how what percentage of people what percentage of people salaries lie between 20k and 60k and 20k is nothing but mu minus 2 sigma and 40k sorry is equal to mu and 60k is mu plus 2 sigma so i know from sebyshev's inequality that probability that my x lies between mu minus 2 sigma no, sorry it's strictly less than right and mu plus 2 sigma i know that this value is greater than 1 minus 1 by k square here k equals to 2 right because this is k right if you look at this formula this is nothing but 2 here right so the probability that my salaries lie between 20k and 60k is greater than 1 minus 1 by 2 square because my k equals to 2 here right my $20,000 and $60,000 so my probability that my salaries lie that how many individual salaries lie between 20 and 60k that probability is greater than 0.75 so at least 75% of people's salaries, at least 75% of people's salaries, it could be more than 75, at least 75% of people's salaries. So the answer here is, this is greater than 75%. At least 75% of people's salaries lie in this region. It could be more. Imagine if salaries was Gaussian distributed, if salaries was Gaussian distributed, it would have been 95%. That's why we are not saying that X percent of salaries lie in this region. All we are saying here is greater than 75 percent lie here. The exact value depends on the distribution. I cannot say that what the exact value is. If it is Gaussian, it is 95 percent, which is again greater than 75 percent. Similarly, in this three standard deviation range, right? This is again three standard deviation, right? This is 40 minus 3 into 10 and this is 40 plus 3 into 10. So in the three standard deviation, you have 1 minus 1 by 3 square right which is 1 minus 1 by 9 which is 8 by 9 right which is which is roughly which is roughly 90 percent roughly so roughly around greater than 90 percent or greater than 8 by 800 by 9 percentage of people's of individual salaries lie in this region of course, if it is Gaussian distributed, we know that 99.7% of people's salaries would have fallen in this range. But if you don't know Gaussian distribution, you are guaranteed that greater than 800 by 9% of people's salaries would lie in this interval. So, Sebyshev's inequality from an applied standpoint, from an applied standpoint, if you are given a random variable who for, who, for which you know the mean and standard deviation and you know that they are that your mean is finite and your standard deviation is finite and non-zero you can answer questions like these that's one of the biggest application of Sebyshev's inequality in practice of course if you want to prove this i'll give some reference links of course it requires you to have some comfortability in proving theorems in probability and there are some other like markov inequality etc that you need to be comfortable about but it's a very very simple idea from an applied standpoint what it is literally saying is what percentage of points what is the minimum percentage of points that will lie within k standard deviations around the mean literally that's what it's trying to it's, it's trying to convey to you right i like this formulation again you'll see this in lots of textbooks but what this means this is exactly equivalent to this right and this 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 can answer a lot of interesting questions as we have seen in this simple salaries example 